So good evening, everyone. Welcome to Building a Mindful New Year. So uh, today is Friday, December 28th, 2018. And my name is Sylvia, and I'm going to be your host. And um, I'm very happy to welcome Kate Johnston today. And she is going to give us a talk about the third parameter that is patience. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Kate. Kate Johnson works for a spiritual practice, social action, and creative expression intersect. She teaches Buddhist meditation at the Interdependence Project, mindful yoga in New York City public high schools, and works independently with social change agents and communities, facilitating embodied approaches to organizational and leadership development. And you can read about her bio, where you will find this uh, recording of this broadcast. And just uh, to tell you, you can, if you want to make a comment or ask a question, you can use the chat box. Or if you want to come live, you can uh, click on the hand icon. So I guess that's all. So whenever you're ready, Kate, you can start. Cool. Thank you. Um, and hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Dharma Gathering. Welcome to the study in my father's home in Chicago, um, where I'm visiting family for the holidays. And um, what a great time, actually, to be able to um, contemplate a little bit and share some practices around patience. Um, so the word that we're translating as patience in the Sanskrit, it's uh, kashanti. In the Pali, um, it's kanti, which is the earlier... Um, ancient Indian language. And for the Buddhist geeks out there, it's one of the few um, Buddhist virtues that exists both on the list of the six paramitas, which is for the Mahayana Buddhist tradition, and the 10 paramis, which is uh, the version of the um, virtues that comes in the earlier teachings in the Theravada. Um, so this just means it's really important. <laughs> and worth our attention to contemplate. And I hope it will be uh, uniquely useful this time of year for you all as um, many of us are spending time with family and doing some reflection. Um, the solstice just passed, the, the sun, the, the earth is turning its face to the sun again. Um, and uh, in that time, often there's some, um, some natural reflection that happens. Um, so yeah, uh, patience incredibly important and useful for both our personal practice and also for um, the movement towards collective liberation. And today I'm really thinking about patience and the perfection of patience as a transformation of our um, relationship with time um, and how that relates to our ability to uh, be present with ourselves and present with each other uh, as we move towards greater, greater and greater freedom. So uh, many of us learned patience as children uh, because I'm in my parents' home. I've had a lot of time to reflect on the way in which I uh, learned patience. And my earliest memory of, you know, trying to be patient um, was around uh, going to the grocery store with my family. Uh, I have the oldest of four children. We each get to pick out a treat and then... Um, wait from the time we left the grocery store to get home until my parents prepared dinner and then after dinner we would get the treat and so um the instruction was to be patient which for me meant kind of sitting in the back seat you know gripping my little knuckles you know tensing my little body holding on like hell until i could get what i wanted which was you know a little bit of sweet or whatever um and uh sometimes i succeeded you know, and controlling myself. Uh, sometimes I did not succeed and I threw a tantrum because um, it was difficult to tolerate the gap between wanting and getting what I wanted. Um, and so that's often kind of the first level of patience we learn uh, with our families or just in the world at large is how do we tolerate this gap between um, uh, desiring something and then being able to attain what it is that we desire. Um, I think that what's amazing about the Buddha's teaching is that it actually invites us into an even more mature way of understanding patience. Um, and moving from 
the model of patients where we um, want something and are willing though um, to hold on like hell until we get what we want. <laughs> uh, moving from that kind of model of patients into a model of patients where we're able to be um, fluid and at ease, um, even if we're not sure when or if we'll ever get what we want. Um, and so what that looks like on the kind of collective level of practice, um, I mean, certainly when I look at the political landscape, when I look at the economic landscape, um, where I live in the United States, uh, there is much to be desired. <laughs> um, it is not what I want, right? And um, for those of you who feel like I do, it can feel like, oh my God, I can't take this another minute, you know? Like the impatience for things to change is so, um, uh, almost oppressive, right? And so um, the the cultivation of patience of Kashanti or Kanti um, uh, invites us into a um, both the the true kind of understanding and felt sense that change must come, that this is part of um, the 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 truths of this realm in which we live. Things are always changing. And that um Patience allows us to access the resilience we need to be able to um, shape change effectively, which is really to say, you know, shape change with an eye towards the long game or as, um, you know, the, the prophetic and visionary Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, um, to be able to sense into the um, arc of history that is long, but bends towards justice, right? So that um, we start to free ourselves from what Pema Chodron called the cycle of hope and fear, where we pin all of our hopes on um, a particular court ruling or a um, particular election outcome. And we like hold on like hell and think that, you know, we can, we can make it till this thing happens. And then um, when it does, we think that, you know, we'll never feel pain again <laughs> politically. And if it doesn't, we think, oh my gosh, the world is over, right? Um, so to be able to have a little bit of a, a lot longer view um, is, is the invitation of the practice of patience. Um, and it's one that can help our work for social change be sustainable so that we don't get burned out um, every five minutes because we've um, hooked our lasting happiness on a particular kind of random outcome that we're, we're looking forward to getting what we want um, in. So that's kind of how I see patients um, manifesting at the kind of collective or political level. When it comes to the, the interpersonal um, domain, which is something that I've been hanging out in a lot this past uh, week, um, you know, and patients in the domain of relationships, um, it's just a really beautiful place to practice. Um, I think especially for those of us who are working towards, excuse me, a little burpee, um, for those of us who are working towards uh, living a more mindful life, um, living a more ethical life, um, living a more kind life, uh, and then um, being in relationship with, um, you know, our families and friends who may or may not be changing at the rate or in the way that we ourselves are, there can be a little bit of a rub or tension, right? There can definitely be, I know for me sometimes a desire to um, kind of, and this is kind of going back to thinking about patience as transforming our relationship with time to kind of force um, others into my timeline of how they should change in the way that I think that they should change, right? So, um, Patience reminds us that people change in their own time. And that um, that attitude can allow us to stay in relationship. You know, like that when when we feel that tension of like, oh gosh, we're not completely aligned the way we think we are, we 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 think we should be, or um, gosh, like this family dynamic isn't something I want to be a part of anymore. I want to change. Uh, there can be this almost like dualistic thinking, like either I stay in or I leave, right? Patience allows us to stay, okay, um, is it possible to stay in relationship, but be in this relationship in a different way and allow my different way of being in this relationship to shift the relationship, you know, the being that is that relationship over time. Um, it also allows us to, you know, stay committed to, to people even, um, 
when they're in the kind of process of um, maturation in a particular way um, and to allow people the dignity of that process um, in their own timing. Uh, so that's how I think about patience as it manifests in um, relationship with, with others. Um, and then, you know, certainly the training ground that the Buddha offers us for patients is in our own personal practice, in our relationship with ourselves and our own minds and hearts as we practice meditation. Um, sometimes uh, I think because of the, the promise of meditation and the benefits that we know that it offers, there can be this demand for instant results or the sense of like, gosh, I've been meditating, you know, all of one year, like why, why, why have I not um, seen, you know, a vast um, shift in like how well I'm meditating uh, or something like that. Um, and so patience also allows us to um, remember here that we're, we're not in control necessarily um, and to show up and do our best anyway. And what's interesting about patience is that um, in some of the Buddhist commentaries, it's talked about as a precursor or prerequisite for the practice of metta or loving kindness. Um, so Buddha Gosa uh, before, um, instructs that before we do the phrases for um, loving kindness um, that were offered kind of in the later, later teachings of the Buddha, um, may I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy, may I live with ease. Some of you might be familiar with these, these phrases that are meant to cultivate loving kindness. Uh, before we do that, he offers a preliminary practice and he asks us to um, consider the, um, the dangers of hatred and then consider the benefits of patience which I think is so interesting, you know, to me, it, it implies that maybe the opposite of um, hatred isn't love, but it's patience. It's the, the space to actually um, allow things to, uh, both allow things to be as they are and have the wide perspective that can inform how we make our next move. Um, so, uh, so those are the thoughts that I've been having about um, about the practice of patience. And I'd like to guide you in a, a short practice. Um, I'm thinking we'll practice for um, about 20 to 25 minutes. And um, we'll start with a little bit of contemplation coming from um, Buddha Gosa and then move into a uh, mindfulness of breathing practice where we'll um, seek to embody embody this quality of patience. Um, sometimes how I notice impatience showing up in the meditation practice is this um, almost like leaning forward into a thought or like chasing after a, um, a breath. And so there's this way of um, embodying patience that allows us to be um, stable and let the breath come to us, you know, let the thought land on the mind and know that it's landing so that we're, um, not kind of forward on our seat, like grabbing for experience, but that we're actually, um, uh, falling back into awareness and allow, and in a way that allows us to, um, receive experience. I guess I'll say before we, we start practicing, you know, in my, my experience that the fruition of patience, um, in addition to a transformation in our relationship with time is, you know, experientially that feels like moving from being hell bent on getting what I want to being able to want what I have. Um, so maybe we can go for that as a, as a uh, inspiration. So um, we'll go ahead and practice and you can, you can uh, be sitting down for this or you can be lying down if that's better for your body. Um, and I advise you to either close your eyes or lower them to the space in front of you. Um, I'm not gonna be doing anything remotely cool on this screen. I'm just gonna be meditating along with you. 
So, um, but it can be nice to, um, even as we close our eyes or lower them, have the sense that we're actually really not alone in this moment. Like even if we happen to be alone in our home or in the room that we're in right now, that um, there are other people who are also lowering their gaze or closing their eyes and tapping into their um, heart at this moment. And so we are joining this great body of beings that are moving steadily towards enlightenment. And that this path is one that we move along, walking step by step and side by side with all of these other beings. And before we move into the mindful breath practice, I'll just ask you to, um, you know, follow these instructions from the Vishuddhi Maga. Um, Imagine that the word hatred is kind of floating somewhere in front of your chest, maybe like a neon sign, and allow it just for this next moment or two to um, enter your heart as if there's a little window in the front of your heart and the illuminated word hatred kind of goes inside for a moment. And of course, this isn't real hatred. This is a, a concept. But just notice how even allowing that concept into your heart feels in your body. And feeling into what the danger of harboring hatred um, is for you, even at the cellular level. And then go ahead and um, let the window in front of your heart open and that word um, be removed. Taking a couple of deep breaths. We kind of refresh the interior space. And then um, imagine that in front of you, there is a lit up word, patience. And see if you can open the, the window in the front of your heart and allow the word patience to come inside. And feeling that this word and its meaning for you is starting to circulate around, um, touching your cells, moving through the veins and rivers of your circul circulatory system, and infusing your entire being with this quality of spaciousness and receptivity. And the wide view that um, allows us access to wisdom. And then we can leave this lit up word here in the center of the chest. As we turn our awareness to feeling our breath. And you might just notice right now you're actually breathing, you've been breathing this whole time. So we don't have to do anything uh, special with the breath really, but just turning our awareness to notice it. to notice and feel the sensations that come with an inhalation and to notice and feel the sensations that move out on the exhalation and letting the mind be just naturally curious about this river of sensation that is always coming and going. Now it's very common as we um, turn our awareness to breath that we start to kind of subtly control the breath to make it longer or shorter or more even. Um, and so, uh, you know, th this is one place to practice um, transforming our relationship with kind of controlling time 
and allowing the breath to come and go on its own time. So see if, um, just as you notice the breath right now, you can drop 50% of your effort to breathe. And then see if you can now drop another 50% of effort with breath. And now let go another 50% of the effort, 50% of that. And now seeing if just for this next few breaths, you can let go of all um, effort, if that's possible for you. So that we really allow the body and the lungs to kind of breathe on their own without rushing them or forcing it to slow down. If you like, as you notice the sensations of breathing in, the sense of coolness in the nostrils, the expansion in the front of the chest and the back and the belly, you might say to yourself, breathing in. And as you notice the feeling of the exhale, the warm air leaving the nostrils, the softening of the chest, the relaxation into the seat, emptying of the body, you might say breathing out. But see if that noting of the breath, breathing in and breathing out can follow the actual feeling and experience of it. And if ever there's 
a sense that you're kind of leaning forward for the next breath or um, leaning forward for a thought of some kind, some thought stream entering the mind that feels like it can't wait. Um, feel free to bring your awareness to that illuminated um, word in the center of your chest, patience. Almost like um, when a touch screen goes dim and you tap it to light it up, kind of like tapping into the heart with your awareness. Um, you could even tap your heart with your hand. Oh, patience, patience. And letting that refreshing of your intention allow you to fall back into the space of awareness, receiving each breath as it comes. Feeling breath come in, feeling breath go out. Noticing, you know, and being kind with any sense of restlessness, a sense that we should be making something happen and tending to our own heart, touching it with our awareness, patience, patience. And now in the last few minutes of practice, I'd like to invite you into a contemplation if you like. It's of course always fine to stay with uh, feeling the breath if that practice is serving you well. Um, but if you'd like an invitation to just um, open up your mind and invite in a being for whom um, a being who expresses for you the perfection of this quality of patience. Um, could be someone that you uh, know, um, a wise grandparent or elder mentor um, or beloved pet. Could be um, an inspirational figure. Um, I often think of Nelson Mandela. And 
if you could in your mind's eye envision as best you can um, this being in front of you, just as you sit right now. Sometimes for me, it's helpful to close my eyes for this part. Um, seeing them in as much detail as possible if you can. Or if you're not such a visual um, person, you know, feeling what it's like to be in their presence. Presence of this great compassion being. And just ask them silently with your heart if just for the last few moments of this meditation practice, you might be able to switch places with them to see your life and the world through their eyes. And if they say it's okay, and it's okay for you, see if you can just with your mind, let your awareness move into their body feeling what it's like to embody this kind of perfection and infinite uh, quality of abundant compassion, of abundant patience. And, um, and to see yourself through their eyes. So looking back at yourself with the eyes, eyes of abundant patience. And then to look around at your life with the eyes of patience. To witness your relationships with these eyes. to look at the world through these eyes of patience. And notice how it feels in your own body to have access to the kind of fruition of this quality. And see if it's possible in some way to really let that feeling soak into your body and into yourselves so that we remember what it's like to have access to this kind of vision. The long arc that can't help but move towards liberation. And then go ahead and um, thank this being for allowing you access to their point of view for this last few minutes. And you can go ahead and move back into your own body, feel what it's like to be sitting across from them, thanking them in a way that feels good, a hug, holding hands, a glance. And you can feel free to keep the feeling of being with this being and allow their image, if it's there, or their sense of their presence, if it's there, to dissolve so that you can really um, come back for this last minute or so of the practice into feeling um, your own body right where you are, your spot on the earth at this moment, and occupying that spot with dignity. and with awareness. And with a powerful sense of patience. And now taking a couple of deep breaths. And I bring some movement into the body, some energy. And when you're ready, go ahead and um, float your eyes open, lift your gaze. You can stretch out if you'd like. Quite a journey we took together. <laughs> and um, 
So uh, for those of you who are newer to daily Dharma gathering, one of the coolest things about this practice is that um, we get a chance to interact a little bit online afterwards. So um, I see there's already uh, a little comment in the chat, but if you like, um, as an act of generosity, it, it is um, really lovely to be able to um, hear from you. How was your practice? What was your experience like? Um, any insights that you have into um, the virtue of patience that you'd like to share? new ways that you might be experiencing it. Um, and then of course, uh, any questions that you have, I'm happy to try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, I see that there's already one from Sandy L. Uh, Sandy says, how can we develop the patience necessary as to not have to jump to complete something that seems urgent and immediate? Um, and the second question is, how can we feel as if the order that, that we handle tasks is okay, even when there's a lot to be taken care of. So yeah, this is, um, I feel like this is the modern meditator's question, <laughs> you know, um, the sense of like, how do we actually um, feel okay when uh, we have a sense of urgency and there are things that are important to complete. Um, Uh, one uh, question that I love to drop in when I'm feeling a mounting sense of urgency, uh, well, first of all, is to notice, and which it sounds like you're doing, the um, uh, this urge to jump and complete something that feels urgent and immediate. Sometimes this happens during meditation, right, where we sit down, all of a sudden it's like, ah, that email, you know? Um, so when there's a sense, when I feel that physical sense of like, oh, I got to jump up and do this thing, um, to just drop in the question, hey, how important is it? You know, how important is it? Could it be done in 15 minutes from now? You know, um, and uh, that often uh, allows me to have a, a, a deeper sense of perspective around um, the, whether the feeling of urgency that I have is actually appropriate to the needs of the task, right? Um, the second question, how can we feel as if the order that we handle tasks is okay, even when there's lots to be taken care of? Um, I mean, I think that there's a couple ways to, to respond to this. You know, one, um, I think that the mind of patience does things one at a time, <laughs> you know, and so, um, and, and recognizes that things actually take the time they take. Um, so I know that there's uh, views on productivity where we um, set uh, time kind of windows to accomplish a task and we um, commit to finishing a task in, in a particular amount of time. Uh, so that's one way to, to work on it, to kind of like plan out the work and then um, just you know, commit to taking the time that, that, that we've set aside for that task and then moving on. Um, but this feeling of like, is it okay? Um, you know, we live in a culture where it's often, um, we often feel that we're not okay unless we're producing. Um, and uh, that the, what we, the work that we do is kind of like what makes, makes it okay for us to take up space. Um, so I often like to really gently, you know, challenge that notion when it comes up. Um, like, uh, is my worthiness really set on what I'm accomplishing and, and how much? Um, and can I, you know, know that things have to be done and also access a sense of worthiness that's independent of what I produce? Um, it's a way of actually challenging, I think, an ableist culture um, that doesn't allow us to be human beings that need rest and need uh, love and need to eat, <laughs> you know, uh, other things that might inter interrupt a workflow. Um, great. So I see another couple um, questions coming in. I'm going to try to move through them a little bit. Um, Rosalind says, thank you. Namaste, Tashi Derek. Uh, thank you, Rosalind. Uh, Jessica says, thank you so much for that practice. I've never tried to see myself through an eyes of another, especially this patient being my father for me. The practice gave me some objectivity, which sort of allowed me to feel empathy for myself. Really powerful. Thanks again. Uh, thank you for that feedback, Jessica. I'm glad it worked well for you. One of my faves. Um, Maria says, Hi, thank you. The focus on the long arc was amazing and it actually added a strength to doing work now with the idea that it has a direction, even if it isn't obvious now. 
I've never been patient. So it's a very helpful experience. <laughs> yeah, I've never, you know, I never, uh, I'm learning. I'm learning to be patient. I was happy that this was my um, topic because um, it gives me the opportunity to practice too. I've been working on it all week. Um, and I'm glad that the, um, the framing of the long art gave a sense of strength, which I think isn't always there when we think of patience. Like um, there can be this way where we think of patience as like being a doormat or being kind of ineffective in the world. Um, but if we can access a sense of patience that can allow us to be strong and to continue to work sustainably towards justice, I think that's the best, um, that's, that's what feels the best to me. Um, here's another um, from Kate, other Kate. Um, Kate, uh, thank you for the wonderful teaching, especially the juxtaposition of hate with patience. Question, is there a difference between patience and letting go? To me, the latter implies disengagement and the former a kind of continuing engagement, but somehow without attachment to the outcome. And can we be too patient? Um, yeah, so this is, uh, I love your questions. And I think that this is where we start to move into you know, the art of the practice of patience more than the science of it. Um, I like your kind of framing of, you know, um, patience being uh, continuing engagement and letting go being a kind of disengagement. Um, I think that both of these words are trying to point us to an experience um, that is one of um, kind of being able to be with experience as it is, and also um, work like mad for change. <laughs> and I think that uh, there's a way in which those two things seem contradictory, like to my mind, um, but to my heart, I feel that they can really exist simultaneously. And that's, I think, the beauty of the heart, that it actually is expansive enough that it can hold evenly, even two seemingly paradoxical experiences. That of, um, you know, being with experience as if we have all the time in the world and being with experience in a way that acknowledges that um, there, is a, there is an urgency to respond to um, the, the current reality. Um, so I really hope that you'll keep exploring that edge. Um, uh, you know, what is it to be, you know, what, and I think it, it, it comes down to, you know, what actually serves um, your capacity to show up, you know, is, is there a way to, um, uh, for me and for a lot of the folks that I work with um, in meditation, too much of a sense of urgency actually paralyzes them. So that there's a sense of like, oh my gosh, there's so much to do. We have to do it all and we have to do it right now. And it's all on me. And it creates this kind of paralysis where it's like, oh, what do I do? Deer in the headlights moment, right? So when the deer in the headlights is happening, uh, because there's so much overwhelm, bringing in this quality of patience is an antidote that allows us to have enough space to say, okay, I'm going to start here. And then I'm going to go to the next step and the next step, right? So that it, it, um, it allows us to actually engage. When um, we are in a state of disengagement, um, either we have somehow um, decided that the problems that exist in the world aren't real or they don't apply to us, or we are mistakenly thinking that it's possible for us to have um, uh, complete ease and peace of mind while other beings are suffering. Um, and not feel that somehow, that um, maybe patience isn't the, that the, there might be a more energizing way of thinking about the world that allows us to, to um, engage the right amount of energy and effectiveness. You know, it might be, um, you know, energy that is needed at that moment. So it's, it's, a, it's a relative teaching, but I, I think that um, the contemplation that you're in seems generative. Like the right amount of um, care without attachment so that we can continue to work with love. Um, and this question of being too patient. Um, I 
I, I don't think so. Um, I think we can be too complacent. I think we can be overly allowing. Um, we can be enabling. Um, but I think true patience, when we're talking about the sweet spot of being able to um, connect with life as it is in a way that is easeful so that we are not hooked on kind of the next gratifying moment, um, even if we think it's an altruistic moment, but that we are um, able to um, be at ease and fluid um, in time as it unfolds and to continue to um, do what we can to work for change. I don't think we can have too much of that. And I often, um, you know, when I'm not exactly sure, I, I do think of um, these great compassion beings who are um, sometimes divine figures. Uh, some people think of, um, you know, Mother Mary, um, sometimes political figures, as I mentioned, um, Nelson Mandela is, is mine, um, to help me um, kind of like pa patients idols, right? Um, ones who have um, been deeply impactful, even as they understand that um, they're not in control of circumstances, but in the circumstances they're in, they um, are 100% in acceptance and 100% doing everything they can. Okay, <laughs> I guess that's all for now. And thank you so much, Kate. It was wonderful talk and practice. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for your participation, your questions, your comments, for being here either live or through the recording. And be sure to come back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time with the fourth parameter session. And our teacher will be Kevin Townley. So I don't know if you want to say some final words or dedicate Hey, Mary? Sure, okay. sure. Um, well, let's just all um, pause and drop back into our meditative mood, closing the eyes or lowering to the space in front of you. And if you can think of your own body at this moment as an acupuncture point in the earth for patience. So that all of the patience of the stars in the night sky the patience of the moon, the patience of space kind of funnels through your body and into the earth and spreads out all around the space around you, around your home, the neighborhood, cities and states mingling with this other um, radiating patience points around the country and around the world. And with this image in our minds and, and our hearts, just an invitation to connect with the wish that um, we all um, are graced with the capacities that we need to meet our experience as it is now and to work sustainably towards the enlightened society that our hearts know is possible. Thank you so much for your practice today. Really appreciate being with you here. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.